I'm sure there's a non-zero number of people who are going to see the name Tomb Raider Reloaded and get excited about a Tomb Raider reboot that they somehow missed. But despite the fact that the industry at large has landed on re-somethinged as informal re-release subtitling, the publisher must have missed the memo on this one. Tomb Raider Reloaded is a wholly new free-to-play mobile game with the exact sorts of monetization and ad integration you'd expect, replenishing energy system and all. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. I have my own misgivings about covering these freemium money sinks, and I usually end up warping the review script around their presence. But I think we can leave the discussion on its monetization at it's one of those mobile games and you'll know what I mean, right? Because despite the justified criticism that these types of games are always on the other side of, there is seldom a period where I'm not reliably chipping away at one during small pockets of free time. Weird as it may be to recommend predatory Skinner boxes, not reviewing these games from time to time does kind of ignore some obvious truths, that they're a massive part of our industry, and that some of these free-to-play time wasters are better than others. And I think Tomb Raider Reloaded is probably among that better category, if not the apex of it. Because despite its genre-inherent frustrating grind walls and intentionally long-term trip feed progression style, it was ultimately compelling enough that I found myself playing it daily for the better part of two weeks. What exactly was I doing? The game's description will tell you I was playing a roguelite, and that's probably technically correct, but may betray the game's true spirit. Because while there is semi-randomized levels and power-ups you collect while playing through them, the driving force behind your wins is probably less moment-to-moment -moment than a traditional roguelite. Tomb Raider Reloaded isn't a game about overcoming challenge through skill and build mastery, but instead a game about invalidating challenge through numerical supremacy and long-term commitment. Obvious spend-your-money-now difficulty walls will have bullet frequency and enemy density that's nearly impossible to overcome with your gimpy starting Lara. Which is why it's less of a roguelite than it is a numbers-go-up mobile game. Almost certainly a gotcha by definition just replace whatever mental image you have of multi-star anime girls, with Lara being the gotcha in and of herself. Your gotcha style unlocks are Lara's gear. Guns, outfits, and a number of different active and passive bonuses that can be collected on your journey, and whose duplicates can be smushed together for higher powered versions with a new color. That journey is structured not unlike a Candy Crush. It's a seemingly, if not literally, infinite vertical climb through level after level, unlocking more powers as you go through. Intra-level progression shares some of that always going up gameplay style. Each level is broken down into a room that fits on your screen. Kill the enemies within or dodge whatever ancient traps there are, then try to traverse up to the next screen. Enemy variety is defined by the types, frequencies, and angles they fire bullets at, where most of the mid-run skill is avoiding the hell of said bullets, while also juggling target prioritization. Tentpole chapter-ending encounters do occur in the form of bosses that go beyond just being sized-up versions of basic enemies and have their own curated encounter designs. There's a fun simplicity to it, especially when you consider that all you need to execute is a single thumb to handle movement. Shooting is auto-fired and aims at the nearest foe whenever you're not moving, so optimal strategies just involve staying out of enemy fire and simultaneously keeping yourself at your gun's ideal distance. When you hit serious challenges, they will hit hard to get that incentive to spend. Without dropping any cash on the game, I found that my first major grind wall was Chapter 3. And that's when the game introduces the idea of the chapters being these big milestone progression markers, and the short-term progression happens in micro-chapters that the game fittingly calls tombs, which are effectively scaled down chapters you do to power up for the real challenges. So my flow for Tomb Raider Reloaded looked something like this. Sign on at least once a day to do my daily challenges, do main chapter missions until I hit a challenge I couldn't overcome, do the tombs to collect and upgrade my gear until I could do said main chapter mission, repeat until I'm bored. Not a revolutionary formula by any means, but a well-executed version of said formula for sure. Because Tomb Raider is a licensed up version of a style of game that the mobile sphere has been crafting for a while now. The elephant in the room is that this is basically an Archero clone, albeit one with less time on the market to build up its feature list and a progression system with a way more narrow scope. The one nagging downside to Tomb Raider Reloaded, obviously aside from the fact that it's an ad-filled hellscape, is roguelite power-ups that never synergize as much as you want them to. Because all the grenades and mines and energy fields seldom compare to strict shooting power-ups and stat increases, because those scale the best with your out-of-front gun upgrades. For me, it got away with it largely because most of my joy came from the long-term progression and upgrading, with the actual micro-gameplay just being a simple realization of the Lara I was able to build. But if you're coming here expecting a roguelite, I think you'll be disappointed in that element. 
Ultimately, Tomb Raider Reloaded is a game I did enjoy my time with. It's very much a product of its landscape, and folks who don't play or enjoy mobile games aren't going to be converted by it. It's taken a working formula and given it a Tomb Raider skin. But damn it if that skin wasn't well applied and doesn't kind of fit for what they're going for. Mid-run decision making doesn't impress, but the simple joy found both in its continuous upgrades and long-term level advancement got into the right parts of my brain to steal the 15 minutes a day it asked of me. Just don't lose sight of the fact that the real skills being tested are long-term commitment and accurate resource allocation, rather than anything you do with your fingers. Ensuring that Tomb Raider Reloaded can only be enjoyed because of its grindy numbers go up progression systems, and not despite them.